He is Shane Lachlan Black, the Internet's original stunt writer. Captain, Captain, all the stars have gone out. No, you fool, you've leaned on the button. Turn the viewer back on. Authors generally announce a new book with the words, The End. It's ironic, but at the same time, it's pretty satisfying. The next item on the to-do list is to write the blurb and make a cover. Well, I did things out of order again, like I usually do, but I still left the blurb for last. And the subject of bestsellers came up once again. I have a policy of not talking about my previous retailer, largely because my previous retailer hasn't accomplished much of anything on my behalf. My new writing project is notable largely because it's proof I beat the robot. I also beat the lazy expectations of all my former bosses who claimed I had no marketable skills. Meanwhile, over the years, I've kept records on how my books did in the pre-get-a-book days. Strike Battleship Argent had a top 1,500 worldwide sales rank in 2016. That put it in the top 1% of all books. It's the title that established my career. It's still my top seller eight years later. But the larger point is that at one point in late 2016, when I didn't have even a fraction of the accomplishments, I had a novel that was one of the top 1,500 books in the world by sales rank. Does that qualify as a best-selling book? I don't know. Devils, Demons, and Dead Men, my first game-lit novel, earned the number one bestseller badge in the Dungeons & Dragons category in 2017. This was at the height of lit RPG popularity. I always thought writing a story about what happened inside a video game was compelling for a number of reasons. It turns out there are a lot of things you can do with storytelling that aren't immediately obvious. When you combine that with the unlimited special effects budgets authors get, you can invent some pretty cool stuff, like the world's most advanced massively multiplayer role-playing game. The book rose to number one. Does that qualify as a bestseller? I don't know. Let None Return Alive was the number one new release in 2021. Got the badge and everything. So did Jessica Halloran and the Asian Warriors issue number one. It was the number seven bestseller in the comics category in 2015. It also happens to be the comic that spearheaded my network with 70,000 readers a day, and it rang up almost 350,000 unique visits back in the late aughts. That network is what launched our studio. We went from making comics to making Flash games, and the rest is history. I've never made the New York Times, USA Today, or Wall Street Journal bestseller lists. But I have had a novel that a fairly large retailer publicly labeled a bestseller not that long ago. And I had a second novel in a different genre in the top 1% of all books worldwide ordered by sales rank only a year earlier. I added those achievements and a few more to my blurb and I realized these books really are the historical record of my career in show business. Jessica Halloran is the first character I ever created all the way back in 1999. Since then, I've worked in animation, video games, comics, science fiction, romance, game lit, merchandising, television, and journalism. I've built successful businesses in four different industries. And I'm fairly certain I've released at least one new comic or prose book every year since 2008, with the possible exception of 2010. I expect most of the folks on this channel will understand if I spend a little time talking about what I did before I started writing about big spaceships. Like most authors, I have to devote at least a little time to marketing, otherwise I end up with a museum instead of a bookstore. Why, I can even talk about my video game career, which is one of the many things that inspired me to write the Million Dollar Artist series. So today's big news is, it's over. I finished a book. It's new, and it's on the shelf, right alongside a brand new collection. Now I'll be making videos about each one very soon, and I'm going to put a special effort into some author commentary on the developing Starship's universe storylines so readers can keep everything sorted properly. I'm also considering taking another swipe at that reading order video. I think more can be done with it, and I think it can serve as an important resource for both new and experienced readers. Things won't stop being about military science fiction hereabouts, but at the same time, they won't only be about sci-fi. For example, I'll be putting one of my romance novellas up on the store later today, 
I have 12 of them. Someone challenged me to write a simple romance, and I overreacted, as I often do. I recommend it if you're a Starships reader, because you just might find a character or two that sound familiar, including, quite possibly, one of my current character's great-great-great-times-37 grandmother from a long time ago. In that book, one of the characters is a captain, and another character is named Powers. Sound familiar? Congress had a say. The president had a say. Ninety other flag officers had a say. But there was a statutory limit on the number of admirals allowed in the Navy, and there were men with many more years in who were simply ahead of him in line, even if the most dangerous thing they had ever faced was a committee briefing. That was the long and the short of it. Jericho Steele didn't relish the idea of a desk job anyway. Men like him with duties like his didn't wear stars on their shoulders. Instead, they wore US Navy t-shirts and showed off their physiques while performing routine tasks, which was what the captain was doing when his grocery cart ran into hers. Well, he was also trying to find the mustard, the yellow kind, not that weird, expensive gold stuff that inevitably had some kind of spice in it that turned a hot dog into a sudden need for a fire extinguisher. One of his Super Bowl party guests once suggested ketchup, but the look Jericho gave him silenced any further such heretical talk. It was her, the girl from the party. Things were a little calmer now. She was far and away more attractive than he remembered. Her eyes gave her face a delicate sadness that practically demanded comforting. He couldn't be sure, but he suspected she hadn't smiled in some time. Nevertheless, she had a softness and a glow about her that stirred something in Jericho he hadn't felt in a very long time. I'm so sorry, she gushed, moving around the cart and attending to damage that wasn't there. The apology was a bit much, even for someone trying to emphasise it. It's fine, really. He spoke as reassuringly as he could. She wore a white sweater, teal capri pants, and rather expensive-looking flats. She put a hand to her face and her breathing got shallow and frantic. When Jericho put his hand on her arm, she flinched. It was then he noticed the half-healed bruise on her wrist. He decided on the spot to keep his mouth shut. Things were obviously bad enough. The best course of action was to change subjects. Another interesting note about her captain, by the way, is I wrote that book in just over seven hours. Did the whole book in one day. So watch for the announcement. While you're watching for announcements, might not be a bad idea to check the title of the day today and tomorrow because it's new. Blackout. Shane Lachlan Black.